Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. Today on the bench we have a Socket 7 motherboard. This is one of the two motherboards I was sent by one of my viewers from Canada. We took a look at this motherboard in this video, I'm gonna link the video down below in the description, and we did some basic troubleshooting. We found an issue with this board, or at least I think we found an issue. Feel free to go and watch the video, no need to do that for today, this is not like a part two. I will go through the basic troubleshooting again real quick just to make sure the issue is the one that we discovered last time and then we'll pick it up from there and hopefully we will have a working motherboard at the end of this video. So let's crack on and take a look at this motherboard. This is going to be my first video where I'm using my brand new Rode wireless microphone uh, which has been kindly sponsored by Nobody, I just bought it myself. I just broke the bank and decided I was uh, sick of the cable and I bought this one. So uh, hopefully it works well and hopefully it will make things a bit easier. But let's take a look at the motherboard. So just uh, to recap, this is the Shuttle 591P version 3.1. It's a Socket 7 motherboard. It comes with three ISA slots, three PCI slots, one AGP, which is quite nice. Obviously, integrated controller, serial parallel, four memory slots. It's based on the VIA Apollo MVP3 chipset, and it comes with 512 kilobyte of cache. Now, I have worked on exactly the same motherboard on this channel before. It's one of my earlier videos, so it's not the best, but if you want to go and take a look, that's the video and the link is down below in the description. And most importantly, this is the motherboard. It's exactly the same, it's exactly the same revision, which is great. If I get stuck on the faulty one, I can use this one as a reference. Now, unfortunately, these boards come with some damage to the 72 pin slots. These will need to be replaced, obviously. I don't have replacements at the moment. Uh, I'd like to see this board booting, posting, and then I'll think of replacing this. But the contacts are not damaged, so I believe I can still fit a memory dim, and it should work. Obviously, it's not ideal, but it should work for a quick test. And once the motherboard is repaired, then I'll think of finding replacement for that. Now, I have a couple of notes here, and I have something that says clock issue, and then it's set for pen 200 so I, I know how I set the jumpers. If I remember right when I went to check this board which was completely dead when I was trying to turn it on I basically found that the clock going to the CPU was only like 12 megahertz instead of the 66 megahertz expected. And obviously that's not gonna work with the Pentium 200. We went through the jumpers, make sure that everything was correctly set. And I believe more or less on camera, I basically replicated the same jumpers on these twin motherboard. And this was working totally fine reading 66 megahertz at the socket. So it looks like we might have a clock issue, <laughs> as this says. Let's uh, repopulate this board with the RAM and the video card and let's double check that we still have the problem and uh, then we'll backtrace it and see where the problem comes from. Right, I've got the RAM in a video card. I even didn't even connect the monitor because I've got the postcard here. If the postcard doesn't say anything, there's no point in plugging the monitor. I don't have a heatsink, but again, I'm keeping my finger on the CPU in case it gets stupidly hot. And I'm gonna power this up in three, two, one, go. Yeah, and as before, there's absolutely no signs of life. The CPU is cold. Might be getting kind of lukewarm, but it's more or less cold. So nothing's happening and let's confirm that we don't have that clock. Okay, here we are. So let's power up the board again. And if I'm not mistaken, let's find the clock pin here. Yes, and as before, we have this weird 12.6 megahertz, which doesn't make much sense. Again, this should be 66 megahertz because the multiplier I think is set to three on this board. So 66 by three is gonna be 200. Now, one thing I'd like to do while I'm checking the clock is to kind of wiggle the jumpers responsible for setting the clock, just in case it's just a jumper issue. Uh, and no. It doesn't look like it's a jumper issue because it looks more or less the same. Right, okay, so I would say, yes, we do have this problem. I believe this is the problem. Uh, let's just uh, quickly check the voltages coming to the CPU. Right, this is a dual voltage CPU, it's an MMX, so it should have two different voltages. I think the CPU more or less is split in two this direction. So I think this pin here is supposed to be the core voltage, which it is, it's 2.8 volts. And here on the left hand side is the 3.5 volts, which is the IO voltage. So that looks 
fine. So the voltage is good, the clock is incorrect. Well, at this point, I don't care about anything else. The clock is wrong, we need to fix the clock. So I would say, let's see where the clock is coming from and then see what's wrong with it. Can I ask you a favor? And this is not a commercial. It looks like the YouTube algorithm doesn't like this channel. At least I can see I got plenty of subscribers, but the numbers, the views are actually declining a bit. And as much as I like making these videos, it takes a huge amount of time and it's a bit, uh, demotivating to see the numbers going down. So if you like what I'm doing here, if you like what you're seeing, would you mind hitting the like button down below and maybe leave a comment, any comment, any feedback. Hopefully that will show the algorithm that this channel is, is alive and there's people liking it. Uh, I would really, really appreciate it. if you can share the channel. Let's make some noise and hopefully uh, that will turn things around. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Now back to the board. I had a look at the motherboard and it looks like this IC is the one responsible for generating the clock and it's an ICS 9148BF. Now, if I'm looking at the data sheet, it's a quite interesting IC because it basically generates the frequency for everything on this motherboard. So it generates the clock for the CPU, obviously, the PCI slots, the ISA slots. Plus we have a 48 megahertz for USB and 24 megahertz for uh, Super I.O. And I also see memory clock as well. So it looks like this is an IC where you got voltage coming in, a ground, you have a reference frequency uh, coming from an external crystal. And then basically you have some jumpers that you can set to have separate frequencies. And this is the table where you can see what kind of frequencies correspond to different jumpers. So these are FS0, FS1 and FS2 are the three jumpers we've been using on the motherboard to set the frequency and each combination correspond to a different CPU and PCI clock frequencies. Now you also see there is a um, I square C control to this IC. So I could be mistaken, but it looks like this IC could be designed to work with like a BIOS where you have where well, you can set the frequencies into the BIOS rather than via jumpers. I don't know. I mean, it says it's programmable externally, but I guess on this motherboard is only using these FS0, FS1 and FS2, which also share with something else, by the way. Interesting. Well, clearly the clock is coming from here. So we can check whether the CPU clock is actually incorrect here. Then we will go with the basics and make sure the voltages are fine. The reference clock is fine. And all the other, vol all the other clocks as well, like the 24, the 48 and everything else. Right, okay, so first thing first, let's go and check and make sure that the clock going to the CPU from the IC is actually incorrect. So we're going to pin 44 here. And yes, it's incorrect, it's 12.6, it should be 66. So it's not like a trace issue or anything. It's coming out from the chip itself. Now, the next clock I'd like to check is the, the PCI clock, which is supposed to be 33 megahertz. That's pin number 10 and that's pin number one here. All right. I mean, the PCI clock seems to be incorrect as well. It's only six megahertz. Now, is it just my impression on everything seems to be like five times slower? Because this is supposed to be 33, is, then 6.2 is more or less five times uh, slower, and the CPU clock was supposed to be 66 and it was 12, so which is more or less five times lower. So it looks like all these clocks coming out from these ICs are incorrect, uh, at least the two that we tested, and, and they're all slower the same amount, or at least the same ratio. Now, this IC also has a reference 24 and 48 megahertz. I'm not sure whether it's used on this board, but definitely uh, we should see 48 and 24 and pin 25 and 26. So let's take a look at that. That's an easy thing because they are uh, the ones here at the end. So that should be 24, I think. And again, we got five. And next one, which should be 48, we got 10. So it's double as it's supposed to be, but that's the wrong numbers. That's very interesting. Well, let's check the voltage going into this IC. You know, that's the first thing I should have done. Now I can see there's a number of voltages. I'm assuming probably they're all the same. Well, this is supposed to be a 3.3 volts and I think 3.5 is totally fine. There's no ripple. And we should have 3.5 on this one as well. And that's correct. There's quite a few of these voltage pins as I've checked VDD1 and VDD-L1, but we also have VDD2, 3 and L2. I would say, you know, let's check those just in case. 
I'm sure they're all linked together, but if they don't get into the, C the DIC, obviously we might have a problem. And this is fine. And this is also fine. This is dirty and it's totally fine. That is fine. And this is also fine. So all the voltages are correct. Now, the last thing I'd like to check is the reference frequency coming in, which is coming from this crystal here. So that's a 14.3 megahertz and it should be 14.3 megahertz. So it's gonna be in pin four and five on these IC. Is this pin four? That's pretty weak. Aha, uh -huh, four. Let's make it a bit bigger. Oh, okay, no, it's actually 14.3. Hmm. And pin five, it's a bit noisy, but it's definitely 14.3. Now I had a little bit of a gut feeling on these crystal and this is the working motherboard. So this one is the one that is working that I repaired some time ago. And if I'm going and check the crystal coming in on pin four and five, I think we can see two things. Number one, the signal is so much better. It's so much clearer. And I believe the amplitude is much higher. So we have a 2.02 pick to pick. If I'm checking on pin five, you can see the signal is still very clear. The amplitude is even higher at 2.6. Now let's swap the board. Let's go back to the faulty one and see how it looks on that one. Cause I have a feeling we might have a problem here. All right, I'm back on the faulty board. I haven't touched the oscilloscope. So let's go back on pin four and five. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. So the signal is kind of okay. Uh, well, it's only 700 millivolts. It was like 2.2 uh, if I'm not mistaken. And pin number five, it's bad. And it's more or less, it's a bit more, it's around 800, but the signal is horrendous. So if you look at this crystal, it's actually a bit damaged. So I'm wondering whether the reference signal coming into this IC is not, I don't know, say strong enough. Somehow, you know, it doesn't catch that clock frequency and somehow it divides everything by five or whatever that is. So I would say, let's have a look around this chip, make sure there's nothing broken. Uh, even though, honestly, I mean, the broken thing is the chip itself, uh, the crystal itself. So maybe I should just get another one, replace it. But uh, I would say removing this from the other motherboard is gonna be kind of easy. So I'd be tempted to, you know, rather than set it, pl placing an order and waiting a week to get one, and then it's not this one and everything, Let's just steal it from the other motherboard for a minute. I'm sure it won't mind. And if that works, then we can just replace it on the other motherboard. Okay, so the crystal has been replaced and uh, I've got the postcard, I haven't got the video card. If it has any sign of life, it will show on the postcard and I need the heatsink anyways if it works. So let's give it a quick go in uh, three, two, one, go. Aha, uh -huh, still nothing. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> so let's check what kind of reference clock we are getting now with the crystal replaced. Now, out of curiosity, this is the working motherboard and I put the uh, crystal back in. So the crystal is from the other motherboard. So that's, that's the one I thought it was faulty. Just wondering whether maybe I just damaged it by soldering it. I've got the RAM and the postcard in three, two, one, go. And it's posting. I can see the CPU is getting warm. So it's definitely working. And uh, so it means on the other motherboard, that's a different fault. Now, if I'm looking at the data sheet of this IC, I see there is a CPU stop pin. So this IC looks like it can be configured to work on a desktop or on a laptop. So I guess in a laptop, when you close the lid, maybe or something, this chip has a low power operation mode and you can tell the chip to stop the CPU clock and or the PCI clock uh, with by basically triggering a couple of pins. What looks like you can't stop is the, the memory clock for whatever reason. So one option could be, even though I don't think it's the case, 
is that this IC for whatever reason is either stuck or triggered into mobile mode and it's stopping the uh, PCI and uh, CPU clocks. But as I said, stopping the clock and there's no mention that the clock will go like slower. It says halt. So I'm not expecting to see something like uh, 12 megahertz. But uh, just to be on the safe side, there's plenty of SD RAM clock outputs and I can check that and see if by any chance that's uh, 66 megahertz or anything different. And no, this is the DRAM clock output and it's exactly the same as the CPU. So uh, that tells me that the, this IC is not in mobile mode. I was not expecting that, but you know, it was something I wanted to check. Also, I don't believe there is a way to reduce the frequency of pins 25 and 26, which is the USB and the Super I.O. Those are supposed to be 24 and 48 megahertz all the time. There's no reason why that should change. Now here on the data sheet, I can see that the voltage for the reference clock for the crystal X1 and X2 is VDD1. Uh, we checked this already, but let's double check it since it's supposed to be uh, pretty important for the reference crystal. And no, we have 3.5 volts as we checked before, so that's not our problem. Now, if I focus for a moment on this crystal here, there's really not much. If I see this right, obviously this is a multi-layer board, but I see there's a trace here coming out here on the left. It goes through a, probably a capacitor and then it goes to the IC and the other pin is doing the same. It's going through a capacitor and then it's going to the IC. Unless there's something underneath the IC that I can't see or something happening in between layers which I can't see. So there's, there's really nothing. And I, you know, I think I've seen before diagrams where the reference crystal is basically connected to the main IC through a couple of capacitors or passive components, that's it. So nothing, no voltage going to the crystal. There is actually voltage going to the crystal, but it's through the IC. The next thing I could think about is, it would be maybe one of these components around the clock generator has got is shorted or anything. Before I spend some time with my Fluke and make sure there's nothing that flags out of this, I'd like to just check with my thermal camera and see if there's anything obvious happening around this IC. And thermal camera is out. Obviously we got some reflections from capacitors and the, the crystal itself. Uh, let's power up in three, two, one, go. I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary. You can see the IC is getting warm, but um, it's less than 37 degrees, which is a reflection there. It's 35 degrees, there it is. Yeah, I really don't see anything here, like any passive components or any silly temperatures from any components here. The, the highest temperature is 34, 35 degrees, and it looks totally fine to me. And I've now compared all the passive components here between the faulty motherboard and the good one. Obviously they're in circuit, but um, having a, another identical motherboard, I can compare what the multimeter says. And I couldn't really see anything wrong. I think my last test is gonna be to check this IC under the microscope to make sure that all the legs are actually soldered. I might actually wanted to uh, go, go ahead and reflow them. Failing that, I think we need a new IC here. And here we are under the microscope. Uh, honestly, I don't see an issue here, but you never know. Um, I wouldn't be the first time I'm seeing the old solder joints just failing. I give them a nudge and then I think I reflow everything anyways, just to be on the safe side. Ooh, look at that. I was wrong. I was totally wrong, look at that. This is completely loose. And this is the <laughs> this is the voltage supply that goes to the um, to the reference clock. Amazing! Is it just that one? <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, no, it's just this one, uh, which would explain hopefully the problem, especially if it's like barely touching maybe there's like a lower voltage going to the crystal that's why we see that lower amplitude on the frequency itself well let's reflow everything and i guess this is also a good opportunity to test my new flux because uh, the amtech is so expensive so i went on aliexpress and bought this one which is the king bow i have no idea how it works so i'm not recommending it yet 
but I've seen it being used by others. Let's, uh, let's give this a go. As you can see, I'm still working on my drag soldering. By the way, I'm using the wrong tip here. I should really use a hoof tip, which has a little cavity at the tip, which uh, holds some solder and should make the process a bit easier. Yes, I'm realizing I'm leaving a little bridge behind, but I will notice in a minute. On the other side of the IC, it's even worse because I have the memory socket in the way. So there is not much space, but you know, it's not the end of the world. I managed to sort it out in the end. And thankfully, when I went to check that all the pins were connected to the pads, I did realize I left the bridge behind. So same process, a little bit of flux, a little bit of time, a little bit of patience. And in the end, I saw that out. There you go. Okay, well, time to test. Will it work? I don't know, I kind of feel optimistic as that was exactly the power supply for the reference clock and uh, we did see something wrong with it. So I don't know, uh, finger crossed. In three, two, one, go. Hey, look at that, it's posting and the CPU is getting warm, yay. <laughs> right, let me put a heat sink on the CPU. Right, heatsink is in, we got a video card connected to the monitor, also plugged a speaker here, so if the motherboard has something to say, we can hear it. Uh, we need the keyboard, and we are ready to go in three, two, one, go. Welcome back to life. <laughs> Look at that, it's working, it's back to life, it's so satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna plug my compact flash with MS-DOS on it, so we can run some tests. And it's booting, yeah. Now this is a bit of a messy installation to be honest, apologies for that. But I do have my benchmarks here. I don't know, let's try something random. Doom, of course. And Doom worked totally fine. So let's have a look at the system information. We do see an Intel Pentium MMX, 200 megahertz, 60, 66 megahertz external clock, times three, of course, and everything seems to be working totally fine. Now, looking at the BIOS here, it's of uh, 31st of January 2001. There is actually an upgrade for this board, because the latest BIOS is 27th of March 2001. It's the, if I'm looking at the string up here, it's the 591 ps 25 so, why don't we go ahead and uh, flash the new BIOS? Now, I know I can probably use some software to do it, but I can't be bothered. I have my programmer here. So this is a Winbund W29C011. Here it is. You can see um, here at the very top, it says it's mentioned 591P. So we know it's hopefully the right one. And uh, let's just program it. There you go, all done. Little bit of contact cleaner never hurts. Now let's power this back up in three, two, one, go. And it work. We got version 25 here of 27 of March, 2001. Right, I think I'm gonna end the video here. I know that I haven't replaced the RAM sockets as I said I would. The thing is, I'm having some trouble uh, getting some new ones. Now, they're actually available from uh, UK suppliers called RS Components. It's pretty, it's a massive warehouse. It's pretty famous in the whole Europe. They have something that would fit 100% and they're not too expensive. They're like five pounds each, so it's not too bad. The thing is, RS Components now have, I think it's a 50 pounds minimum order. Below that, they will charge you a little extra. So just to get those two sockets delivered to my place, it's gonna be like 20 pounds altogether, which, you know, it's a nice board, but I, the sockets are working. I've got 32 megabytes of RAM in here, it's totally fine. Right now, I don't wanna spend 20 pounds just to have the board complete. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to, you know, place an order to our, from RS Components next time I'm ordering something else, or even better, if I stumble into a broken socket 7 or similar board, I'll see if I can rescue the sockets, the RAM sockets, and then I'll transplant them into the shuttle.
But for now, I would say the board is fully repaired and, uh, and fully working, so that's great. And I guess at this point, I can get rid of this clock issue sticker and the motherboard is working perfectly. Now, I believe that when I introduced this board on my unpacking box from uh, Canada, one of my viewers mentioned that if I was able to fix the shuttleboard, they would send me the K6 to 500 megahertz, which I think is the maximum this board would take. I don't have any of these CPUs, so you know, you know who you are if you're watching this video, um, feel free to send it, I won't say no. That being said, uh, I mean, the comment is real, but that being said, don't feel like you have to. I appreciate the offer, but you know, it's totally fine. Don't worry about that. That being said, again, if uh, K6 to 500 megahertz comes through the post, by all means, I would be very happy. This is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumb up down below. And as I said, if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment just to tell the algorithm you enjoyed this video. I would really appreciate that. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I wish you a great day and I hope to see you again soon here on my channel for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye.